16 minutes before the hour now, the White House taking a stand against bullying. Anti-bullying rally. To stomp out bullying. Bullying. Anti-bullying. Rally this week invites students to share experiences of bullying and make a pledge to stand up against it. It all seemed so much simpler when I was younger. Growing up, I was what the doctors called husky. And I promise you this, if your pants size is named after an animal, you're definitely going to get made fun of. I do remember bullies from TV and movies, though. When we fast forward to modern day times, schools are certainly getting hit from many directions. To constant cuts in budgets and classroom sizes outweighing the available amount of teachers, students are facing an ever rising demand to get into college and universities with even less financial aid available and an ever rising cost of tuition in America. Some schools are even faced with the worst decision ever in closing extracurricular activities. One of the worst travesties we face in America happened right here in the city that I love, Chicago, with over 50 schools closing their doors last year and over 2,000 teachers and service workers left without a job. When we couple this all together, we're definitely not creating the best environment for kids to grow up in anymore, and we wonder why we have problems with things like bullying. According to ABC News, over 30% of students in America are either facing bullying or are bullies themselves. I truly believe that this problem is much larger than we think, and if you ask anybody that's ever been bullied, they're going to agree and say that it affects all 7 billion people in the world. One thing I can tell you for sure is there's definitely no shortage of creative ways to draw attention to our bullies in America. Of course, in addition to all the traditional campaigns and rallies against bullying, some people are even faced to hold signs at street corners drawing attention to the bullying they've done in their schools. One set of parents even wanted to make a larger example by having their child wear a dog surgical collar around. For every set of parents that think it's going to be a punishment to make their kids wear thrift store clothes, I guess they don't know too much about the hipster movement. I guess in America we do have the good old trusty sign, but we better not assume that all bullies can read. And even though I do find it extremely fashionable, there does seem to be a whole group of people that think just by wearing pink we can end bullying right away. And this guy is one of them. The inmates in his tent city prison in Arizona have a constant reminder of being lifelong bullies. One thing I know for certain is that it's okay to stand out in a crowd. And oftentimes, people that are bullied do. But just because you stand out in a crowd doesn't mean you need to have a magnifying glass put down on top of you. We set out on a quest to find out what really does impact bullying in America. Was it fancy ad campaigns? Was it cool slogans? Was it working directly with people being bullied? Or is it working directly with the bullies themselves? When I brought members of my team together, I was baffled by what I discovered. Why is it that, that you're part of this? What is it that makes this thing differently? The setup or whatever? So for me, and I think for all of us, it's, it's the message. We're trying to get a message. We're not just trying to say, uh, don't bully. And it had the same name as, uh, at that time, WWF wrestler. So a lot of people called me the big red machine. So imagine you're six feet tall, you weigh about 80 pounds, and you're in fifth grade. Everyone picked on me. We searched in corporations and in government, and we searched in the private sector and nonprofits, and we were baffled to find out that the answer to bullying in America is a 12-year-old kid named Tony Sandifer. Tony got a group of his students together and collected some of the issues that classmates faced in their school, created a list of these issues, and presented them to the principal's office. When I was in school, I did spend a lot of time in the principal's office, but not for things like this. For being only 12 years old, he's been an active community member for over five years. Tony's helped create anti-bullying campaigns throughout the Chicago schools. And although he's been a victim of bullies, he now knows how to empower himself to get to the next level, to lead by example for his peers. But Tony is also the exception to the rule. He's not afraid to share his message, and he's definitely not afraid to speak his mind. Little Tony told me he's going to be the President of the United States. And you know what? I believe him. Can you only imagine what the bullies are going to say then? Better hope that they paid their taxes. We're on our way over to Julius Pepper's house because he's uh, involved with giving out the Julius and Peppers and Leah Ames Humanitarian Award uh, to a young guy uh, that has done a lot of things to stop bullying. He was bullied himself, and um, you know he's really taken a, a leadership role inside the schools uh, to stop bullying. Now, I was what the doctors would call a fat kid growing up, and the only way fat kids don't get bullied for being fat is by making fun of themselves. Now, if those are the two options, not a lot comes from it. So, uh, although I don't know much about sports, uh, I definitely uh, care about people like Julius Pepper standing up. And, and what do you got to say, Tony? Julius, you're the man. He's a man of few words. Tony Gasparitis. The stash is for you. That's not, this mustache is definitely not for Julius Peppers. I'm Julius Peppers, and it's not cool to bully. When you get to spend time hanging out with people like Julius Peppers, you'll realize one thing right away, that they're normal people too. <laughs> 
Just because Julius Peppers is a world-renowned football player doesn't mean he can't slam dunk the basketball too. Just like little Tony Sandiford, because you're involved in organizations and clubs doesn't mean you can't sit at the cool kids table as well. Just like Julius has to ignore that cold Chicago winter, sometimes kids at school have to ignore what they think they're hearing. Kids like Tony Sandiford can go to school and really understand what to take in and what to ignore. What kind of advice would you give those kids that are getting picked on? Just to um, ignore, as hard as it is to, to do at, at a young age, you gotta sometimes just ignore people and, and their comments because, um, you know, you, you really, it really doesn't mean anything, you know, if you know yourself and, you know, you feel good about yourself, what anybody else says shouldn't really matter. So. See, Julius has the opportunity to run off the field at the end of each game, but I promise you one thing, he never would have that opportunity if he didn't run onto the field first. One thing that Julius Peppers and I do have in common besides our athletic ability is our love for people like Tony Sandiford. That's why I support 12-year-old Tony Sandiford for president. Oh, and our buddy Julius said he had one more thing he wanted to do for Tony, just to thank him for what he's doing for kids across the country. My name is Julius Peppers with the Chicago Bears. Congratulations on receiving the Julius Peppers and Leah Ain Humanitarian Award. Tony Sandiford, thank you for standing up to bullying and leading the charge. I've definitely learned a lot through the process of better understanding bullying. And one thing I know for certain is that the answer to it is part of a process and not an event. And it's people like Tony Sandiford that make me realize that the issue of bullying goes well beyond the classroom and we have a chance to actually make an impact. My name is Chris Foltz and I'm a social impact strategist and that's how you make an impact in bullying.